Hi there, welcome to Conversations. I'm your host, Bree. Thank you so much for spending some time with us here this weekend. Joining me this segment via Zoom is Kelly Smith. She's certified relationship coach and author of the new book, Out of the Darkness, which examines dating after healing from a toxic relationship. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on your show today. I really appreciate it. Yes, so thank you so much for joining us as we look at issues that affect us here at home in our community and across the nation. Uh, but first, Kelly, give us a little bit of insight about yourself, your background. So thank you so much again for having me on. So my background, I'm an author, a writer, mom. I'm also a certified relationship coach. I specialize in helping people heal after they have left a toxic relationship behind and help them to date again dating after a long-term relationship or after a, long, a long-term a long relationship ends or a toxic relationship ends. I wrote my first book, Signs in the Rearview Mirror, Leaving a Toxic Relationship Behind, talking about how I was a toxic person in my first marriage, how I got into a toxic relationship, and then healed from that. Out of the Darkness, my second book, is healing, dating after a toxic relationship, and then that first year of finding your healthy relationship. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that. It seems like you're uh, sharing your stories with people who could really use some, uh, you know, relationship advice uh, in all aspects. So this is awesome. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. Can we now can someone rebound in a relationship like can a rebound relationship be a good way to let off some steam after a nasty breakup? And where, you know, when are they a bad idea? So I feel like after a relationship ends, I think the first thing that we hear so many people say is to get over someone, you have to get under someone new. That has to be the worst advice I may have ever heard. Going from a relationship that just ended into something that's a rebound is not only not healthy for you, but it's also not healthy for the person that you're rebounding with. A lot of times we're not capable of being completely honest with what our intentions are. So maybe we had met someone and we're doing this rebound thing and they think that it's going to turn into something amazing. If you meet someone and you're both on the same page, could that help? Possibly. But what that's doing is that's hurting your healing. We should be healing, not dating. We should be healing, not having a rebound relationship. I'm not sure a rebound relationship is ever really the best way to go when we're trying to get over someone and to really heal so we can get into something new and something healthy. Yeah, and so how do you know you're ready to start dating again, you know, once that relationship is over and, and you do feel that you are healed possibly? Well, the thing about healing, healing is amazing. I did it. I'm still doing it. It's something that's more of a verb, you know, we're always going to be healing. It's, we're never going to be like, here I am, I'm healed. But the best way to know that it's time to start dating again or that you're ready is when you already dated yourself, taking yourself out, where you take yourself on a vacation or a trip. You can go to the movies on your own. You can take yourself out to dinner. You have fun with your friends. You know who you are now. We are never the same person going into a relationship that we are coming out once we come out of a relationship, whether it was healthy or toxic, we still have to sit back and figure out who we are now. Who are we today? We learn so much from the person that we were with, again, whether good or bad, that now we have to figure out who we are. So dating before we're ready will only hurt ourselves and the person that potentially thinks they might have something with us. Right. And you know, some people in relationships, they consider a relationship contract uh, to set, like, boundaries and stuff. It, it Or is needing, like, a signed agreement somewhat toxic in a way of itself? I mean, it's, it's interesting because um, yes and no. Where if we're looking at something, and great example real quick, last night I actually said to my boyfriend, I was like, what if I proposed giving you a relationship contract? Right there he was like, I do not even want to know what that means. <laughs> So then I was like, okay, what if I said to you, let's write down some of our relationship goals? And he was like, yeah, that actually sounds like a great idea. So basically a relationship contract is writing out your relationship goals on you know a piece of paper and revisiting that at a certain time. But when you jump into it and you say to somebody, he has the relationship contract, ooh, that is going to scare off everyone. Like we have a contract with the gym. We have a contract you know, with work, we have contracts everywhere. I don't want to bring my lawyer to a relationship and neither does he. So when we have that one word, 
that word seems to be more toxic contract. It's like, we don't need to have a signed document or an agreement to talk about what we want to do in our relationship. So one aspect of it sounds amazing because we're going to write down what our goals are. We're going to work toward our goals together, and then we're going to set a date and revisit it. But when we bring in the word contract, that's going to scare the lights out of anybody. Right. It's sort of like that same sense of not what you say may be how you say it. Does that follow the same lines? Exactly. It's the delivery. So if we say relationship contract, he was basically like, get out of my house. (laughs) But then when I said relationship goal setting, he was like, welcome back in. So yes, it's, it's exactly how you set it up and exactly the verbiage that you use. Right. And so what if you find yourself in a similar situation, you know, as before, uh, you know, possibly another toxic relationship, how do you get out of something like that? And you you see the signs quick and how do you get out of something like that faster, possibly avoid it altogether? So the the best way to do that, and it's not uncommon to find ourselves attracting the same person. When we find ourselves doing that, then we know we still need to heal. We, that's a good sign where it's like, ooh, this person's getting jealous. This person is starting to control me. This no longer feels good. What is my accountability in that? So in order to get away from that, normally if you feel like it's going one way south, make it their idea. Sort of do that a little bit where it's like, okay, stop taking the phone calls, stop showing up, you know, and stop agreeing to dates, that sort of thing. Stop doing the things that they like that you were doing, and that way they may say to you, hey, this really isn't working. Sort of like a slow fade, or you can say to the person, you know what, this really isn't working for me, I don't wanna see you anymore. We don't have to give the whole, I have to work on myself, I have a lot of stuff going on at work, I have family issues. If we just say to the person, this was a great experience for me, but this is no longer for me, and end it straight away, that's your best bet. Right. But for a lot of people, it's kind of hard to do uh, just to be up front. Is there, I mean, like you said, I know you have, you stated, uh, you know, kind of make it their idea or, you know, stop taking their calls or stop saying, yes, I'm going to go with you to this and X, Y, and Z. Isn't that a little like kind of ghosting though too, also leading them on like that instead of just being up front and straight, but like, what can you do if you are that person that cannot be up front and straight? Well, that's, that's where it gets a little bit um, tricky because it is really hot. It's very hot. And yeah. I remember, like, the first time I had to do it, I was absolutely terrified. And I think what happens is once we do it once, then we kind of get used to it. And we're like, okay, this isn't going to be horrible. This person's not going to be angry with me. And it's, it's getting that courage and the ability to be brave, which is why I say if it gets, into a, if it gets to a point where the person that you're dating – you kind of feel like if I end this, he might react, then sort of making it their idea could be a way to go Mm -hmm. because it's like, okay, if, if it's their idea, then they feel like they won. If we're dealing with a toxic person, because they always feel like they want to win. So if we are telling them that we are not interested, it makes them chase more. So it all depends. But if you, if it's early and you see the signs, the best thing to do is to, you know, be straightforward. But if you can't do that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough situation because you may have to just be brave and, and, and do it and just say, hey, this really isn't working. You can do it via text, which I know isn't the best way to do things. But if it hasn't been going on for very long, then there really shouldn't be, like, hot feelings with it. Right. And it's, yeah, a quick way to get the point across as well. Yeah. Um, you know, like, and you said it before, you know, if you find yourself attracting the same type of people, same type of abuse in these relationships, these talk- toxic relationships – you know, what should you do? You said healing. Is there any examples you can give? I know everybody's different, but maybe some things that may have worked for you and possibly can work for other people to, you know, still participate in this healing process. Yes, absolutely. For me, what I I did myself was I got into a recovery program. So I went into something called Celebrate Recovery. They're actually international. They're everywhere. So I got into this program and really learned why. Why did I get into something toxic? Why did I stay? Why did I allow it? So instead of turning the focus onto him or her, like, oh, they did this to me, let's let's retrain our brains to think, like, why did I allow this? Why did I stay? So I got into a recovery program where I went once a week and I had a sponsor, and it was amazing. I also took time off of dating. I actually took five years away from dating. 
I knew I needed to heal from the toxic relationships that I had been in. And if I didn't heal, I would continue attracting the same person over and over again. So, but in the, in that time, I realized how amazing it was to be single where I, I had fun again. I learned who I was. I went out with my friends. I did take myself on vacation. I'm at the point now where I'm in a relationship and if he's busy, I can still go to the event that I want to go to even if he can't go. So I learned how to be independent both in a relationship and outside of a relationship. So taking it one, one step at a time, finding a program where you can go into for recovery from certain things you don't know you, that you may have had that you're dealing with. I personally had anger issues. I was codependent. I was controlling. So I had to learn why I got into things, learn how to heal from it, and now I use the tools that I learned in my program to be in a relationship with not only another person, but also myself. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing this with us. I really appreciate it. If you're just joining us this morning, we have Kelly Smith uh, via Zoom. She's a certified relationship coach and author of the new book, Out of the Darkness, uh, which examines dating after healing from a toxic relationship. Kelly, can you give us more details about your book, where we can find it, more information about yourself as well? Yes, absolutely. So my both of my books, um, Signs in the Rearview Mirror, Leaving a Toxic Relationship Behind, my first book, and my second book, Out of the Darkness, you can find them both on Amazon and then also signed copies on my website, www.bebravecoaching.org. And on that website, you can also find out more about my relationship coaching, my books, my podcasts, um, and a lot more information about myself and the things that I've been through in my life. Once again, in case you missed that, that's www.bebravecoaching.org. You can also find her at Be Brave Coaching on Instagram. And at Kelly's underscore author on Twitter. She also does free relationship coaching as well. Awesome. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Conversations is a public affairs program of the station. 